Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a multi-level dungeon system. So previously we've seen this. If I build this, we have a we have a nice key lock based system hidden behind the mini boss. And once we get the key, we, we can unlock the the boss room and then go to the exit. There's also a treasure path uh, over here. We have a shop, we have teleporters and all that stuff. So that is created with a graph like this. So we are going to extend this to create a multi-floor based dungeon. So that would create something like this. So currently we have a few floors. Each floor has its own key log based system completely isolated from the uh, different floors and it's completely customizable so uh, yeah so we have a lift and you can put some gameplay logic that locks the lift or whatever so here's how we do it uh, in the start node i created a uh, in start start node we have a spawn room and a floors and exit so this is the new node and this is responsible for creating the uh, uh, the different floors. You can have as many floors as you like, uh, and that expands to the to the actual room. So uh, let's run this one by one. So uh, this is the execution graph, and this decide decide defines how the rules are run. So we're just going to run the start rule, and that creates the spawn room, the floors, and the exit. So next we're going to run the add floors. So here what we are doing is we are expanding this floors with an S into multiple floor nodes. So let's look at the add floor. So what it does is it it just adds an extra floor node to the right of it. So we have to, it adds the floor node and uh, before that it just puts a lift entrance and a lift. And it also retains a copy of itself here with the, the, you see there's a floor floors with an S so that when you run it again it would add a, it would add another floor to it so if I run this once it had it has added a floor so I can run it as many times as I, as I like so this would basically add multiple floors to your dungeon so I'm gonna run it four times so it has added floors and lifts in between them and finally, we want, to, we want to get rid of the floors here, floors with an S, and we want to replace it with a floor. So that is what the finalize floor rule does. And that's just replacing floors with a floor. So this gets replaced. So now we have n number of floors, uh, which you can control from the uh, graph grammar. So here we are going to just expand the floor with the one that we saw earlier. So this is the old uh, simple system which we saw it's a single floor system so I just copied this over and uh, and this is the rule for growing the floor so this is going to be expanded to that so grow floor is just taking that and expanding it to this now here's an interesting uh, uh, feature you can control the you can control how the links are, are recreated after this node has been expanded so in my case i have a pretty complex graph where we have a key lock system and we want to move to the next floor only after we have uh, completed the boss room yeah, so we want the exit to be after this so what i have done is created two wildcard nodes uh, and a wildcard node has a star and it matches with anything so anything that is incoming here and anything that's outgoing so this way you can control what uh, gets connected to what after the, the flows node has been expanded. So we want to connect it here and uh, it would eventually be connected after the boss room. And since the indices are two, it knows that uh, the mapping would be like this. Uh, so let's run this. So it has created, it has expanded the flows two three four five and uh, we're going to grow the 
so if you do the rest of the stuff you're going to grow the room graph and uh, this is how the room graph looks like either branches off or it adds a new room next to it so you can control how big your rooms are as well by increasing this number and we finalize it and insert corridors between the between the rooms another feature that uh, another feature that I didn't cover last time is the is the module database so how does how does dungeon architect know that a corridor maps to a certain level uh, what is a teleporter what is a shop for example you can define anything you want here uh, and that becomes a node and then you define the mapping uh, so for example if I want to specify what a teleporter is so here in if I go to the snap connection modules all of these are level files so every room that you see here is a separate level file which should be streamed in and I have a module database that maps all of this so you see I have a mapping for corridor uh, if I open this this is how a corridor file looks like I've added a new file called lift entrance and a lift so this is how it knows right so if I switch over to here all of these mappings whenever it encounters a certain node in the result graph for example a teleporter it would look over here and if it finds multiple instances of it it would pick one of them So loading is a, is a bit uh, in the editor, the loading ta is taking a few seconds because the editor is trying to stream in all of these levels but in runtime you can use level streaming and it, it just builds it instantaneously so I'm just going to show you if I hit play it just builds it right away uh, and it works with level streaming and it's really fast. <laughs> 